Again, I'm going to give you a problem in rectangular and change it to phasor. We have 3 plus 4j. That's 3 in real, that's 4j in the imaginary portion. This is the real portion. This is the imaginary. So this we call vector A has a value, 3 plus 4j. Now, if you don't want to do that in phasor, you can change it to what we call polar. I mean, in uh, rectangular mode, you can change it to phasor mode or polar. Sometimes instead of phasor, we use polar, the same thing. Polar, phasor. Our book, when we deal with sine, cosine, they're called phasor. In math, they don't deal with sine, cosine, just called polar coordinates. So to change it to polar, that means I need to know what the length of this vector and what that angle. Well, using what we know in trig Pythagorean's theorem, we'll call this side C. Pythagorean says C squared equals what? A squared plus what? B squared. So to change a problem to polar, the magnitude of that is going to be, that's called the magnitude of A, is going to be the square root of what? the real portion squared, because A is the real portion, and B is what? The imaginary portion. So this will be the square root of 3 squared plus 4. I don't put 4J, just 4. We're talking about the value of it. So that's what? The square root of 25, which is plus or minus 5. In this case, it's the length of a vector, so it's plus 5. Now, how do you figure what the angle is, theta? Theta here will be what? The inverse tangent of the side that's opposite, which is what? The imaginary over the real. The opposite over the adjacent. My opposite side is the imaginary side. My adjacent one is the real side. The inverse tangent. So theta will be the inverse tangent of 4 divided by 3. And if I go to my calculator, and it doesn't matter what mode you're in, you can be in degree mode, radian mode. So just make sure you write it that way. Inverse tangent of 4 divided by 3. And it's 53 degrees. So now this vector can be written in polar as 5 angle 53.1 degree slash angle if you look at my calculator the ti 89 or this is 86 actually we have that mode on it see right there right over the comma that little angle i can write that five angle 53.1 i don't know if you can see it Our calculator actually can add in polar, subtract in polar, multiply and divide. The 83 doesn't have that button on it, but you can get to polar by going to math mode. They have that polar and coordinates or, um, is it math? I think it's math and mode, one of them. So how do we add in polar? You can't really add in polar. That's the problem with them. Rectangular is beautiful to add in rectangular mode. Notice we just take the real to the real, the imaginary to the imaginary. You cannot add in polar. So if I want to add 5 angle 20, and I want to add to it 4 angle negative 30, add or subtract. I can't add them in polar. i got to convert them back to rectangular if I don't have one of those calculators. And this will be to convert to rectangular 5. And by the way, just think about this. This is what you have. There's your vector. Physics. Think of physics. You have a vector 5 angle 20. And you have another angle 4 angle negative 30. How would you add them? 
components? Yep, you find the x and y components for each one. And you add the x to the x, the y to the y. So you need to find the x and the y component. Well, what's the x component? Well, for this vector, the x component is going to be the cosine of 20, and the y component is what? The sine of 20. Remember that? So this would be 5 cosine 20 plus j, the y value, 5 sine 20. And the other one will be what? The x value 4 cosine negative 30 plus j, 4 sine negative 30. So you find the x value or the x component, and the x component, you add them together. 5 cosine 20 plus 4 cosine negative 30. So the x value is 8.16. The y value, 5 sine 20, add to it 4 sine negative 30. That's a negative 0.29. It's really horrible to add in polar because you get your answer in rectangular. Well, if you're adding in polar, guess what? I don't want my answer in rectangular. I want it in polar. This is what I know. The vector looks like this. It has 8.6 units in this direction, 8.16. It has a negative 0.29 this way. And I'm looking for that vector. What is the value of that vector, and what's the angle? So how do we change it back from rectangular to polar? To get r is going to be what? The square root of the real portion squared plus the imaginary portion squared. Eight point one six squared plus negative point two nine squared. So the square root of eight point oh, I gotta put parentheses to include them. Eight point one six squared plus 0.29. I didn't say negative because my square is going to be a plus anyway. So 8.165. So 8.17. And theta is going to be what? The inverse tangent of the imaginary, which is 0.29, over the real portion, which is 8.16. The opposite over the adjacent. Second 10, negative 0.29 divided by 8.16. It's negative 2 degrees, 2.03 degrees. All this stuff, do I really need it for circuit? Not if you have one of those calculators. But I want to show you the math behind it. Notice this calculator. If I want to add them, I use parentheses for them. I'm a big fan of parentheses. 5, angle, 20. Close that. Can you see that on the screen? I'm going to add to it another set of parentheses. 4, angle, negative 30. Ready for the answer? Enter. 8.16 angle oh my answer on rectangular see my answer 8.16 and the angle negative j see the comma there can you see that comma with the answer that means I'm in rectangular mode no problem I can go to mode and change it to polar here where's mode here mode Rectangular coordinate, how about polar coordinate? Hit enter again, and here's the answer. 
8.167, which is 8.17, and what's the angle? Negative 2.03. So the help of these calculus, I don't have actually to do this by hand. But a lot of times you're doing the problem, you don't want to look at the calculus and waste your time going to it. Some of the stuff we should know quickly, like when we're dealing with a capacitor and inductor. What makes polar really popular is when you're multiplying. Now when you're adding and subtracting, when you're multiplying and dividing. So here we go. If I'm multiplying in polar, if I said, what is 5 angle 30? And I want to multiply that by 4 angle 20. A lot of times in some books, they write that 5 e to the power of j30 times 4 e to the power of j20. When you're multiplying, how do you multiply these two? Don't you multiply the coefficient, add the exponent? This is 5 times 4, which is what? 20 e to the power of j, what? 30 plus 20, which is 50. And that's how we multiply polar. We go 5 times 4, 20, angle 30 plus 20, 50. And if I check that on my calculator, five angle 30 times 4 angle 20, and it says 20 angle 50. Can you see it? So that's why you, you want to know the rules. You don't want to be going to the calculator for that stupid thing. I mean, you should be able to do it in your head. If I want to multiply 6 angle negative 40 times 1 angle negative 90, 6 times 1, 6, what's negative 90 minus 40? Add the two values, negative 130 degrees. 3 angle 50 times 8 angle negative 90. 3 times 8, 24 angle what? Negative 40. Then how do you divide in polar? Well, dividing is as easy as multiplying. If I have 5 angle 30 divided by 2 angle 20. Remember, this is 5 e j 30 divided by 2 e j 20. You divide the 5 by the 2. What's 5 by 2? 2.5, right? And what do you do with the exponents? Don't you subtract them when you divide? 30 minus 20. So when you're dividing in polar, you don't have to change it to that. It's 5 divided by 2, which is what? 2.5. And subtract the angles. 30 minus 20, which is what? 10 degrees. So this would be like the shortcut way as opposed to like them to the Correct. So what we used to do when I was your age, we didn't have these graphing calculators. We have the cheap ones. So when we have in polar and you want to divide them, I mean rectangular, you want to divide them, we used to convert them to polar quickly, then divide them in actually polar and convert back to rectangular. That's a lot quicker than the conjugate. 10 angle 40 over 5 angle negative 20. 10 divided by 5, which is what? 2. 40 minus a negative 20, which is what? 60. 18 angle 0 divided by 9 angle 50. 18 divided by 9, 2. 0 minus 50, negative 50. Here's my proof. Let's take one of them, 18 angle 0. 
If it's angle zero, you don't have to put the angle actually. If you just wrote 18, they'll know that's angle zero automatically. Divided by nine angle 50. Two angles, negative 50. So you really want to add and subtract in rectangular, multiply and divide in polar if you don't have one of those.